Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video today about it's that time of year again. It's, you know, mid-July, August. This, I feel like, is the time where as a parent of unschooled or homeschooled kids, you really have a lot of pressure on you. Um, because there's, you know, the hype of back to school and you're you know, maybe your your homeschool kids are, you know, having more contact with like their public school friends or their public school neighbors or their public school cousins. And, um, you know, people get together, vacations, family, things like that. And for the homeschooler, especially who's like not super sure in, you know, because who's sure? Who's really sure what we're doing? Like nobody is like, oh, I'm totally confident in what I'm doing. It's not a thing. Like you don't, you know, maybe you're just starting out and you're thinking, oh, I'll be like so much more confident when my kids read or when my kids, you know, know their times tables or something. Um, but it's not, it's not like there's some kind of magic uh, milestone. I'm watering my garden. Um, there's not like some kind of magic milestone where you feel completely 100% confident in what you're doing um, as an unschooling parent or homeschooling parent. And so summertime can be really difficult for a lot of us, um, especially those who live in a place where they don't have good support. Um, I live pretty rural. Um, I'm about an hour from what I would call, you know, the city of my choice. Um, I really love Austin, and but we're we're far enough away that it's a bit of an issue to you know get into town regularly. And as far as like you know, being able to just have like quick imp impromptu, you know, play days or mama days or anything like that. Um, it takes a little bit of planning because we do have, you know, maybe an hour, hour and a half drive into town, um, which I know for a lot of people that's like a deal breaker and they won't do it. Um, but for us, it's super important um, to get the right support because another thing, you know, especially with homeschool families, maybe especially with moms that have more than one or two kids, um, they don't have a lot of bandwidth for social interactions that aren't going to be like nines or tens on the scale of like, you know, 10 being the best, one being the worst. Like personally, I don't have a lot of bandwidth to give, uh, to something that is not going to be at least an eight in my book and in my kids' books. Um, in terms of how much we enjoy it, in terms of how much we, you know, care about and enjoy the people that we're spending time with, which I don't know. Um, I've been told that sounds a little bit snobby. It's for me, it's just a matter of conserving my energy. Um, I have five children, four of them still at home. There's no way that I can, um, especially with all the driving, um, there's no way that I can commit to a whole bunch of social activities that are only, you know, mildly, entertaining, mildly enjoyable. It's got to be reserved for the, the eights, nines, and tens. And, you know, a lot of people have trouble with connecting, um, have trouble finding their tribe. Uh, for us, you know, we live in the South. We are not Christian. We are not, um, we're not military. We're not, you know, conservative. And a lot of homeschoolers around here are, um, and a lot of them use curriculum where we are unschoolers. And so it's, it's different, you know, kind of right out the bat, it's different. And when my children were younger, I used to feel like we were desperate for any social interaction. And so it was kind of like, take what you could get. So I tended to play down those aspects of our family that maybe, you know, wouldn't fit in so well with like the traditional homeschooling group or whatever. Um, but as I've gotten older and as my kids have gotten older, more importantly, we've realized that it's really not worth it. And it's not even like, it doesn't honor us to hide who we are with the hope that people will like accept, you know, most of us, like, why do we want to buffer ourselves? Um, and then maybe, you know, six months down the road, people are like, oh, you don't go to church? And then they don't want to spend time with you. After you've invested six months? Nah, not worth it for me. Uh, so as I've gotten older, I'm a little bit more upfront about, yeah, this is who we are. This is how we feel, um, how we think about the world. And so 
you know, if, if you're going to be uncomfortable with that, please just let me know now. I don't have, I don't have the time or the energy to devote to folks that are going to write us off for, you know, what is in my opinion, petty stuff because life is too short for that. I only am going to be able to, you know, give a hundred percent, um, to the social interactions where others are also willing to give a hundred percent. So for us, what that means, what that looks like is that we do a lot of driving because our people are in the city. And um, so, so we have, you know, we have a particular homeschool group um, that we've we found like kind of like a co-op, but it's specifically for unschoolers. And they have the most amazing people there and they have the most, you know, entertaining, fun things. Um, when you go there, there's no... Um, there's no kind of backhanded tension about, oh, your kids play video games or, oh, you guys, you know, you, you don't go to church or, oh, well, what math curriculum do you use? Um, there's none of that at all. And so it's quite refreshing um, compared to, you know, we'd get all those questions um, and more. And then it just, it felt like we were wasting our energy um, and I think also, you know, even, even with smaller families, even with, you know, maybe you've got just one kiddo, um, it's still so important to seek out, you know, eights, nines, and tens in terms of human connection. Because the thing about public school is, what about socialization? Um, A, public school is not actually, you know, you get in trouble for socializing, so it's not actually about socializa socialization. And in my opinion, it's better to have one or two deep, lifelong good friends than 30 plus people that you know only, you know, because, oh, you like airheads? I like airheads. Let's be best friends. Um, you know, it's good to be able to branch out socially, but you're not going to, you're not going to necessarily have the time just in a public school setting to you know, nurture those deep bonds of friendship. And so, you know, on the one hand, people are like, oh, aren't your kids lonely? Well, on the one hand, yes, but on the other hand, no. And again, it comes down to, we are trying to focus on quality over quantity and making time for those, you know, seeking out those relationships and committing to, you know, putting in the extra drive time or, you know, the more, you know, more specific things that, that our kids like. For instance, my daughter is really, really into Harry Potter. Like, not a little bit into Harry Potter, but really into Harry Potter. And so, you know, if, if we're, if we're seeking out friends that, you know, maybe a fair portion of them are like, oh, we don't let our kids read that kind of thing. It's kind of a drag. And, you know, at any, especially for, you know, for kids to be, it's, it's like they're going to be judged for their interests in public school or outside of it. But one of the wonderful things about homeschooling and unschooling is that if we don't like something, we can change it. And I feel like that is a very important life lesson to teach my children. If you don't like something, change it. That's what we do as adults, I hope. Um, if you're, you know, struggling and having a miserable time with life, like, are you just gonna keep working a job you hate that makes you miserable for five years because, like, or are you gonna look into how can I make my situation better? How can I, you know, how can I take some charge, take some control and, um, make my situation more, more pleasant. And I'm not saying, you know, of course there's a, there's, you know, value in having to stick with things that aren't fun and aren't enjoyable, but to have an entire, like to have like 80% of your life be things that you don't enjoy and that make you sad. I don't think that's, you know, it, it's a limiting belief system to to raise your kids in I want my children to feel empowered to you know speak up if they don't like something whether it's how they're being treated or if someone is you know speaking rudely to them um, 
my children have discussions about, for instance, what consent means and what, you know, how, how to be, how to honor someone as a person, how to be kind and how to be, you know, they, they, they are willing to explore those boundaries with friends of theirs because they know that it's not just, you know, a fleeting relationship like, oh, maybe this kid sits, sits next to me in class this year, but I'll never see him again next year because they'll move or I'll move or he'll be in another class and it won't matter. Um, my children have had to, you know, navigate um, growth within their relationships um, in a larger, in a larger way, in a more long term, a more like a, a, taking the long view in terms of relating to their friends because my kids friends aren't just their friends I'm also friends with their parents and I'm also you know our families are friends and um, in the past we have had we have had um, families in our group that maybe we didn't resonate with them or you know but the kids enjoyed each other or maybe the kids enjoy, you know, or maybe the kids didn't resonate, but the parents resonated. And so it's all about navigating these things on, with a long-term eye for, you know, for, for, for depth rather than breadth, if that makes sense. Because I don't think there's any point in having a whole bunch of shallow relationships, um, I'd rather, you know, cut right to the chase and talk about the deep, important things than, um, you know, sticking to what's on, what's the latest on TV and what's the new gadget we've bought. Um, my kids don't really care about that stuff as much either. And it's, it's very refreshing because the friendships they do have are more meaningful and they think more deeply about how can I nurture this and make sure that it doesn't fall apart um, long term. And I think those kind of relational skills are severely lacking in our society today. And so seeking out your tribe, especially as an unschooler, especially as someone who, you know, maybe doesn't follow the crowd in other walks of life, it's, it's so important and it's a beautiful thing to start young. So. If you're feeling like the people in your world are all telling you, oh, you know, maybe you should think about public school, um, you know, as if you've never heard of public school before, as if you've never, you know, oh, gee, I never knew that existed. Um, clearly, if you're homeschooling, if you've only been homeschooling for a little while, even if you're just thinking about homeschooling, it's not something that you arrive at lightly. It's not something that you just went, I think I'll try that. Chances are we've thought deeply about our decisions relating to our children especially with their education. And so if the people in your world are mainly people that are pressuring you or making you feel guilty or making you feel less than inadequate in some way, find your tribe. Find some new people to include in your reality. Even if it's just, you know, one or two folks at first, it makes all the difference to be able to have that one friend that you can go, wow, I feel really overwhelmed. People are really getting me down. My kid saw a commercial with a school bus on it and now she wants to go to school. What do I do? Just to have somebody to talk to. And just even for your child to have another child to talk to and be like, oh yeah, we don't go to school either. It's cool. That can make all the difference. That can be a pivotal person. Because every, every person that we meet in our lives is here on, on like a sacred mission to teach us something, to, to show us something. And so... It's really important to to take the knowledge that we're handed by the people that are just in our reality, even if it's like bothering us. But it's also just as important to cultivate, to actively seek out um, the people who are going to nurture where you want to go. Because you're not a passive, you know, you're not you're not a leaf floating down the stream. You have oars. You have a paddle. Use them. Take some direction and seek out what you desire in your life, whether it's relationships, experiences, etc. And do that for your children as well, because childhood's so short, it matters. Thanks guys. Bye.